Peter, I am very intrigued by how you got connected to the Angular team. How did this happen? Uh, I guess it was somewhat by chance. I was working on an Angular app and... Uh, very early on, yes? So it was way before Angular got to version one. Um, and Hold on, how did you discover it then? I tried out a few of the other frameworks and uh, eventually I just ended up with Angular. It just seemed to be very intuitive. It just fit really well with the way that I uh, understood the world to be. You started using Angular before it even became Angular 1. And uh, how did you uh, sort of become sort of a, I guess, a rock star in that community in the eyes of the, the founders? So uh, as I was using Angular 1, uh, well, just before it became Angular 1, um, I was reading a lot about uh, how it worked. I was reading the source code because I really wanted to understand the, the insights. And I noticed on the mailing list that there were lots of questions uh, that weren't really getting answered. Um, so I just started answering the questions on the mailing list. And uh, I think at one point I was answering like 90% of the questions that were appearing there. Um, and it, uh, to some extent it was taking away from me actually developing code because I was just happily chattering away on this thing. Um, and so, I just became known as the person who answers uh, mailing list questions. And I think the guys in the uh, Angular team were, uh, were really pleased that I was helping out in this respect. And so uh, they came to London, they were visiting uh, Europe to, see, to go to DevOps and they came to London and they invited uh, me for a, a meeting, uh, along with Pavel Kozlovsky. Uh, and at that time, Pavel and I had just agreed to start writing a book about Angular as well. So it was, uh, it was very fortuitous. Okay, and you were also talking about what's going to happen to Angular 1 when Angular 2 is released and how you're sort of measuring the, the need to sort of pull Angular 1. So um, we, we had some discussions a while back about how long Angular 1 will be supported. Um, everyone was asking us, you know, when we, when we started announcing Angular 2 in, uh, like for instance, in September, and there were the, uh, uh, the there was the keynote where we were talking about uh, migrating and moving everyone to Angular 2. There was a lot of concern about how long we will continue using Ang uh, developing Angular 1. So uh, we discussed at length what the best option would be, and we felt that it wasn't really fair to just create some arbitrary deadline for when we were going to stop supporting Angular 1. Um, and uh, I think it was Brad and Igor came up with this idea that we should let the community decide. So um, when people stop using Angular 1 and start using Angular 2, then we will uh, match that in terms of the development time that we put into the two projects. And how are you measuring that? So the, so the way that we're going to measure it is, uh, I guess, slightly arbitrary, but um, we decided that the only way we could really, because you can't actually see exactly how many people are using Angular because lots of them are internal in corporates and so on. Um, so what we're doing is we're measuring how many uh, unique visitors there are to both the Angular 1 docs website and the Angular 2 docs website. And then as the number of people hitting the Angular 2 docs website starts to overtake the Angular 1 docs website, then we will start to decline the support for Angular 1. Um, so it's up to the community. If no one transfers over to Angular 2 and everyone continues uh, going to the Angular 1 docs website, then we will continue to support Angular 1. Well, that won't speak well for Angular 2, will it? <laughs> well, of course, we don't expect that to happen, and we don't want that to happen. What we want is for everyone to love Angular 2 so much that they all decide to just move over, and suddenly we'll find that you know 95% of the people are using Angular or going to the Angular 2 website, and at that point, we'll start to, to wind down some of the development on Angular 1. But you know, it's not going to happen in the very short term at all. Excellent. Peter, thank you so much for your time. No, you're welcome. Thank you.